Hello YouTube, this is Salam. In this video, I will show you how I repaired this 24 inch backhoe bucket. When I bought the backhoe, this bucket was in terrible shape. It was bent, the cutting edge was in bad shape. It had a lot of wear on the sides and on the bottom. The previous owner replaced the shanks and the teeth. They didn't do a good job in the way they installed the shanks and also the weld was horrible. I addressed all these issues. I installed their teeth. That's what I'm gonna use this backhoe on. And uh, the original video I took when I repaired this bucket, some of the clip had sound issues due to high wind. And also I positioned the camera in a way I had the echo effect. The sound was coming back to the camera and sound like I was talking from underwater. So I will do voiceover in those video to make the video more enjoyable. I hope you enjoy this video. When I bought the backhoe, this is how the bucket looked like. As you see, the previous owner installed five new shanks and five new teeth. They didn't install them correctly. They didn't space them right. The weld looked horrible. It had a lot of porosity. In some area, the shank is not attached to the cutting edge like here. This tooth is pointed correctly. It's supposed to be pointing to the outside of the bucket to protect the side of the bucket from wear. This one didn't. It's pointing straight down. As you see, the spacing is not correct. Some of them, they pointing to the side and some of them pointing straight down. The center tooth is not square. It's pointing to the side too. So I had to cut the shanks and install a new shanks on the cutting edge. These teeth, they call them tiger teeth. They designed to work on concrete and rocks. I'm going to replace them with dirt teeth. I did try them before I remove these shanks and teeth and they work okay on dirt. However, for better efficiency, you have to use the proper teeth for the application. So I'm gonna replace all of them with dirt teeth. I will remove all these shanks and I will fix the cutting edge before I install the new shanks and new teeth. Look how many layers of weld they put on it. I removed all of them using the cutting wheel. Probably it was easier if I used the torch. However, I was worrying about damage this part over here. There is nothing on this side. It's barely touching. This is the one was on this side. I'm just gonna clean it with the grinder and get deeper over here a little bit. They build it with weld. You see big difference between this side and this side. This one over here about three quarter to one inch. This one only about maybe five eight, even less. I also use the grinder on this side to remove the shank from the cutting edge. I removed all the weld and grounded the cutting edge flat and then I hit it with the wire brush. As you see, they used the torch in the past to remove the shanks and they caused damage to the cutting edge. I removed all the weld with the cutting disc on the grinder and then I used the grinding disc 
to flatten the cutting edge probably it's easier to use the torch but this will cause damage to the cutting edge I also grounded the side of the bucket so they look exactly the same I'm going to fill all this spot with weld before I weld the new shanks and this is a close-up shot to the damage that was done to the cutting edge by the oxyacetylene torch after I removed the shanks and grounded the cutting edge I painted it to protect it from rust it's been sitting for a few days today I'm going to remove this paint and I'm going to build the weld where the shanks used to be I'm also going to straight the side of this bucket as you see using the straight angle I have about three quarter of inch over here also the other side is bent there's about half inch I will show you how I'm planning to straight these sides this is my setup I did exaggerate I pushed it further than I need So hopefully when I release the jack, it's going to come back and it's going to be straight. Now I have to do the other side. I push this one as far as I want. I have to put the jack this way. The actual release on the other side because it will not pump in the horizontal position. This has to be down when it's in the horizontal position. I removed the paint with the brake party cleaner. I tacked this 3-8 rod to act as guide so when I weld the cutting edge it won't be wavy it will be straight I'm going to fill all these gaps this is a 3.8 rod I don't remember the alloy name but it was uh, anti-abrasive material I'm going to fill all these spots with 7018 I also cut piece of AR400 for both sides to straighten the side cutting edge I'm going to fill it with weld and I will build this one over here too and then I'll shape everything with the grinder I was able to fill all the old cuts, torch cuts, 
and I had to use uh, 6011 rod. Uh, I tried to use uh, 7018, but it kept uh, bubbling and caused porosity and whatnot. So I remove all that, and then I uh, hit it with 6011, uh, build me a base weld, and then I fill the rest of it with the 7018. It is perfect now, flat all the way. I also put three passes over here. And I'm gonna take the bucket now so I could build weld over here, over here, and on the other side. I couldn't tilt the bucket far enough to build a good weld in the back. The bucket came off easy of the tractor. I just had to remove the two pins that held it in place. And now I'm gonna try to flip it. Actually, I ended up using two by sixes, two of them, and got it perfectly level. This over here with 6011. I ran the 6011 this way. Both of these beads, I ran them this way. I ran one 7018 and then I overlap with another 7018 and I filled all the void with 7018. And now I'm, I'm gonna grind this flat. It's straight, it didn't bow or anything during the weld. And now I'm ready to grind it.
This one over here is about 3 8 high. This one over here almost to flush. So I'm gonna clean it and build it with weld. This part over here, like I said, it's straight, level, and a flat now. There is a few hole, but that's not gonna bother anything. They're not even a 16th low, so I'm gonna leave them alone. I built it up with weld. It took about 30 to 40 rods, and I got it to size. It's a flush right now in this area where it used to be wear out. I built it up on the edges about 3 8 of inch or about one centimeter higher than it used to be. Next, I'm gonna turn the bucket to the side and fix this part over here, the inside over here, and then I'm thinking about putting one pass of 70, 18 all the way to here from this side, and then put the hardened rod on top of it. The hardened rod's supposed to be used last because it uh, doesn't have mechanical property to uh, weld two part together the only purpose for it is to harden the surface so it doesn't get wear out as regular weld would I finished building well on both sides. I built the cutting edge over here and over here. I match them, they sticking out now three quarter of inch on both sides, about one and a half centimeter. The way I decide to lay the teeth, I think this is how it was originally. I put the center tooth on the bucket using frame and square, make sure it's straight. These, I just match them to these two cutting edges, which they at an angle, they come in this way. They stick out as far as the edge of this cutting edge to the outside. So I think that's gonna be perfect. These teeth over here, what I did, I have equal distance over here in the back. I have uh, three and three quarter, three and three quarter, three and three quarter, three and three quarter. And then I split the difference over here and I have four inch, four inch, four inch, four inch. So the cutting edge for the teeth is gonna be spaced out equally. This one is angle half of this, how it's angle, it's not the square. This one half of that distance, I don't know how much is it. I believe it's about 95 degree from this side, maybe 80 degree from this side, I don't know, but it look right, right now it look right. I don't want to install the teeth on the shank, I just put them here temporarily to mark and take all this measurement. These pins, they came with the shanks, the center of them is made of rubber or hard plastic. I believe it's hard rubber, and I don't want to install them now. It may get damaged, it will melt it. The heat from the weld will damage it. So I'm gonna leave them off. I actually will remove the teeth after I tack all these teeth in place. I'm gonna go ahead, weld them, and I'll come back when I'm completely done with it. I hard surface this, the edge of the bucket, but I'm going to hard this surface, the top surface, after I finish weld 
the shank because I didn't want to uh, the hard the hardened rod uh, it's not supposed to be heated if it heated it get annealed so I'm gonna weld it over here it's far away it will not damage this one but I'm gonna go ahead hard face this and this edge probably up to here same thing and this edge up to here and between the teeth this part over here and I may build a diamond shape I don't have enough rod today so this is gonna probably have to be completed next weekend but I'm gonna go ahead and install the teeth today and see what I get with it I have the shanks installed I took the bucket of the tractor and now I'm ready to finish weld everything. I finished welding all the shanks on both sides. I built all this weld. I went with two basses. I went with one this way. And then the top bass, I went this way. I found out to be better, you build thicker weld this way and uh, you cover the weld better. And it look better, it look nicer. If you keep doing uh, the basses the same direction, it may climb up and doesn't look good. The only thing left now, I'm going to build a diamond shape over here on the cutting edge uh, to protect it from uh, the abrasive when it go against the dirt so it won't wear out as quick. I'm going to build one here. Uh, it's inch and a half square and I'm going to build one small one over here just on this part. The hardened rod you can't just apply it directly. You have to build base for it with 7018. The 7018 will stick better to the base metal. And also it will preheat the metal. The hardened rod need heated surface for it to adhere better. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a base weld in this direction. And then I'm gonna take the hardened rod and I'm gonna go the opposite direction and cover all the surfaces. And then I'm going to run one bass all the way probably to here or may, I may go all the way up here. I'll see. I'll probably try to use two rods. One will probably go this way and then finish it wherever the other rod finish. And then I will hard surface the cutting edge and I'll be done with it.
I build it with 70, 18. It's inch and a half squares. And now I'm gonna use the harden rod and I'm gonna go the other direction. This part over here, I'm gonna build it all the way with that harden rod. I finished welding and hardening all the cutting edges on this uh, bucket. I did all these. This side here. And as you see, I build this up. It's about one inch from the shank on both sides and this the other side same way I build it up about one inch from the shank on the bottom side I harden the cutting edge all the way around and I did this all the way from this side and from this side, the bottom side. And I build up weld on this. When I started, this area was almost flat over here and over here. Now it's sticking up about half inch. I primed it with this. This over here, the old pin. It's in bad shape. I bought a new one. As you see, this come with the smooth side and a side with register over here or latches. This will go like this, the latches to the front and the smooth side to the back. The reason is this teeth over here, when you push it against the shank, they don't uh, perfectly line up. This will stay, I'm exaggerating now, it's gonna be like this. And when you push this pin, it's gonna push the teeth against the shank to keep it tight so it doesn't play around. I had to make this tool over here to push the pins in. And to get them started,
Take a C-clamp. Yeah, none of this in yet. all the way in It's a flush. The outside is gonna be way easier. Or it should. I should make that tool a little bit longer. This way. Extend it longer. But I'm out of material. I had to make I had to make both sides.
it's in. I also need to repair the ears on this bucket. They wear out so much that the bushings fell off on both sides. Both ears, the hole right now is oval, so I'm going to have to make custom bushings to go on both sides. This bucket has these two bushings over here. One meant for uh, more leverage and less travel. The other one will give you more travel and less leverage than this one. So I'm going to repair these. This is still in good shape and they tied. So I will take the bucket off and I will repair these bushings. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.